I've been like that for too long because so much stuff is happening. I've been wanting to say something about like James don't say anything, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and talk about some things today here on the I'm Free Project. Mm. What's up, my kinfolk? This is James from the I'm Free Project, and I just wanted to. Oh my gosh, I mean. You know, it's been a couple of weeks since I last posted, and so much stuff has happened. And I was actually like, okay, I'm not going to say anything, but then some other stuff kept happening. I'm like, okay, well, should you say anything? I mean, it's, it's, it's like just day in and day out, just stuff happening all over the world and locally as well. So I'm going to get right into it. And, and, if something's happening, I had to take, uh, I, I used this talk off the cuff, um, but I had to take notes on this one. So I am going to get right into it. And first and foremost is that uh, the biggest thing that's, that's really, well, I wouldn't say it's the biggest, but you know what? We're going to talk about it. Is this third thing with Disney. Do you know that they are actually allegedly having uh, a lesbian couple in the new uh, Finding Dory movie? So there's a little snippet of a scene of two women where they're walking with a baby in a carriage. Now, and something happens to where the baby is knocked out of the carriage and it was replaced with an octopus, something like that. And and from the appearances of it, from that little snippet, people are saying that, you know, this may be Disney's first reflection of a, a lesbian couple on, in their movie. So now, if that being the case, and bad for Disney, you know, which for Disney, I wouldn't put it past them because Disney is so demonic and Disney, they have so many subliminal messages in their movies uh, that pertains to witchcraft. It's ridiculous. So I, I, I would not put it past them. I mean, it is a very, very liberal company. And one of the companies that said they would pull out of Georgia uh, or Florida or something like that, one of the states down south, um, and I want to say that it was uh, Georgia if, uh, because of the bathroom bill. But, of course, we know that uh, Nathan Deal, I think that's his name. Yeah, I, I, that's sad. I can't even think of the governor's name. Um, and he pulled a whammy on the soul. Uh, yeah, but anyway. So, yes, uh, Disney uh, has maybe, maybe not, may have a lesbian couple in a kid's movie. So, this goes to that indoctrination. Let me get to my notes indoctrination of children it goes back to what i've been talking about for the longest as you can see they are attacking children they are trying to get children involved in all this foolishness and even to the point that uh the lgbtq uh, uh community you know they've been doing a a a a a, a, a twitter thing uh, a promotion not a twitter promotion but uh trying to get people to do a hashtag and one of the hashtags is actually give Elsa a girlfriend. Yeah, give Elsa a girlfriend uh, for the new Frozen movie. And the person who plays Elsa actually thinks it's a good idea. Her name is Idina Men Menzel. Uh, yeah, the voice of Elsa. She's not thinking that it's talking about it's a good idea. Like, children need to see that. As though children need to see <laughs> something as impure as lesbianism. I mean, come on. And to any lesbians out there, shout out to y'all. You know, I don't hate you. I love you. But, uh, yeah, the lesbianism impure. So, now, but then also, they uh, they also have a hashtag going on on Twitter called Give Captain America a Boyfriend. I mean, really? Are you really trying to go there? Give Captain America a, Captain America a Boyfriend? So, as you can see, these movies are geared towards young people, kids, and, again, trying to indoctrinate the next generation of children. It's, it's really sad. It is really sad, but it's the way of the world. Now, moving right along, my next story is, um, have you heard that Puff Daddy is supposedly releasing a uh, a gospel album? And I think it's called Thank You. And from what I read, and uh, I have to go back and check my sources, but what I read is that this gospel album was created back in the 90s, uh, but it was never released in 1997 or something around there. Or oh, 2007, maybe. Uh, but it was never released. And uh, so 
but he's feeling like I guess now is the time to release it and so forth and saying he's always been a child of God and so forth and all these things and you know calling God his best friend and one article I read and one of the articles that I read that it came from Ebony magazine excuse me is it Ebony or is it, yeah Ebony magazine that he said he want to make God cool I I I, I I don't know how you make God cool. Now, here's the deal. You know, I'm going to be James, and God gave me a personality. You know, the personality to be me. Uh, I'm not trying to make God cool. I'm not trying to be cool, you know, or anything like that. I'm just an outspoken person. Always have been. But it's not my job to go out and make God cool, to make him palatable for the world. I present God's truth and what it is, and whether you can like it or not. Because, see, if you make God you try to make God cool, then you're trying to appeal to the flesh. That's what you're doing, P. Diddy. You're appealing to the flesh, and the flesh doesn't ever get saved. And neither will that person that's walking in the flesh. They won't be saved. They will come to some goosebumps. They will come to, you know, a cool sounding song. And I'm not saying that you can't be dropping a message and you might be dropping a seed to somebody. However, the majority of times it's just a whole bunch of false conversions. That's what happens. When you try to get your, your music and all that kind of stuff to appeal to the flesh, you end up with a lot of false conversions. That's exactly what happened. But yeah, P. Diddy, God don't need you to make him uh, to look cool. What he needs you to do is to preach the truth and live his word. That's what he wants you to do. Your obedience is better than sacrifice, my brother. So preach the truth of God's word. And, and see, because if you were to bring drop the truth on people, trust me, people ain't going to listen to that album. They don't want to they don't want to hear the righteousness required, the righteous part, the part that tells you know to, to abstain from uh, sexual uh, immorality, uh, to uh, stop lying and cussing and cheating and backbiting and all that kind of stuff. Blah blah blah. You know they don't want to hear that. But you know you make it sound cool and this and that. All you did was appeal to the flesh. And again, the flesh never gets saved. Now, P. Diddy, rethink that statement. So God doesn't need you to make him cool. Anyway, moving right along, Jamal Bryant. You know, I'm trying to keep my tongue off that man, and, I'm, and as a matter of fact, I'm really not going to say much about Jamal Bryant, but I will just post the link down below, but Jamal Bryant just got clocked by uh, some street, not street evangelists, but street organizers, uh, uh, community activists there in Baltimore. They told him to get out of Baltimore, cussed him out up and down, left and right like a dog. And even did a little freestyle rap on him. I mean, it was really sad. And then he creates a post on um, a, 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 a Periscope post talking about the experience. And he, he handled it with a lot of grace. You know, so, you know, bless God for that. But, you know, this thing raises a question. You know, so he goes out to this community. And it looks like it's, in, you know, maybe a rough part of Baltimore or what have you. And dude just goes off on him saying, we don't need you, blah, 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 so forth and so forth. And you, you know, embarrassing us and... And you're not really representing the people and so forth and all that. So it brings up the question, you know, do people actually, how do they see these mega church pastors? You know, can a mega church pastor actually relate to the person that's that's in the street? You know, can, can they relate to them? Because at the end of the day, you know, like the disciples, they went to and fro and yes, they, they were able to go to the high places, but they were also in the low places. So now... I guess my thing is, how can those who have bodyguards and all that kind of stuff and rolling around, you know, in Maybox and, and, and have on, you know, $2,000 suits, how do you relate to the average man? You know, the average person out here who may have had a, a sort of a rough life and, and here you are trying to talk this game and they're like, uh, bro, you don't, you don't reflect me. You know, there's nothing about you that, 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 that reflects me or that I can identify with. You know, you, you, you live in like this and all that and so forth and so forth. And I'm not saying that God does not raise us up and put us in part of his house. I'm not saying that, that at all. But what I am asking the question is, how do people actually relate to these big time preachers, the regular church folk, people who don't go to church, people who, who really stay away from church because they don't want to be bothered with church folk. You know, so how do they see them? You know, so it was just interesting. But if you watch the video, I'll put the link down below. It was really sad what happened with Jamal Bryant. Now, moving right along. Have y'all heard about this new British talk show? Not talk show, but a reality show. All these uh, human pups. These homosexual men 
who put on these rubber dog suits and they actually live like dogs, like puppies. Uh, and they go around, they're acting like puppies, they're acting like dogs to the point of, I mean, just doing, just crazy. Just crazy. I mean, you have got to be out of your blank mind to be walk a grown man talking about the, the, the premise behind it is that they had, uh, they were, and they were thinking that, you know, maybe one or two people would respond and want to be interested in participating, but come to find out there is a large number of people, homosexuals at that. Uh, and it's just the truth. I mean, not heterosexual, the, the homosexual men that, that, that dress up like puppies. Again, I want to leave a link for that one as well, but that is some freaky stuff. That is some freaky stuff. And I don't freak it. It's demonic. That's demonic. You want to dress up like a dog and act like a dog and be walked and handled like a puppy. You need to... <sighs> Y'all, we are in the last days. I'm telling you. And see, this is what I was talking about. You can't open the door to that homosexual stuff and not expect for everything else to follow behind him. Because if, it, if it's just based on a feeling, anybody can feel anyway and it has to be... And it has to be validated. Because you validate it for one, then that means you have to validate it for everyone else. So, moving right along. So, I'm telling y'all, pedophilia is next. Watch out. I mean, it's it's really sad. But that's that's next on the agenda. Because transgenders are, transgenders are already here now. So, again, you're knocking down the doors to common sense. The smartest people doing the dumbest things. Anyway, uh, the next one. So, we got the human pups now. Bishop Long. Bishop Long. Bishop Eddie Long, who was recently on uh, Steve, the Steve Harvey show. And on the Steve Harvey show, I'm not going to talk too much about that. I used to go to Bishop Eddie Long's church, and um, I left that church. I, I wrote them a nice little letter explaining why I was leaving. I actually, you know, worked there as a lay minister and so forth. And I, mm. Anyway, so I decided... That it would be best that I leave, uh, but I stated my reasons and it was disregarded. So, um, and we saw what happened after that. But anyway, uh, moving right along, he was on the Steve Harvey Morning Show, the not Steve Harvey Morning Show, Steve Harvey's talk show, and um, of course, because of the lawsuit, he still can't say anything with regards to the the why, the what, the yes and the no's of the case. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it at that. But, you know, brother, really can't say anything. The, the, the accusers can't say anything. And it's really, I'm like, at this point, you still can't say yes or no, you did or didn't, but I'm, I'm, I'm just going to leave it alone. And, you know, God bless him and his, his wife. Uh, but yeah, but he was recently on the Steve Harvey, uh, talk show. So I'm sure you can probably look that up online at this point. Now, uh, so now I'm going to get to some more serious issues. Uh, Jan Crouch from TBN, she passed away recently. And uh, hearts go out to, the, uh, to their family. Say what you want to, you know, about the hair and all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I, I don't know the lady. I don't know that lady. But, you know, it's like, you know, God used them in mighty ways. I mean, I, I, when I was growing up in the gospel, as I'm growing up in the gospel, you know, I watched TBN and I learned some things and it helped me to grow. So um, God bless them and, and, and I pray for the family. And uh, yeah, so just pray for the family. But now my last thing that I want to talk to today, talk to you about today. And this is really serious. And, and, I've, and I've mentioned this before. Here's the thing, and I probably should have said this first because of the seriousness of the issue. And let me pull this down right here. Okay. Because of the seriousness of the issue. Um, and it's impacting lives a big time. And even to the point to where there are Atlanta vloggers who are gay who make mention of this, but yet they still get dogged out for even bringing it up. And it's it, and it, and it just makes sense. It just makes sense. The issue of the epidemic of HIV rates in Atlanta, and specifically in a generalized area, namely Midtown downtown area, and it's so funny how the talking heads like to blame it on everything other than behavior. They want to blame it on government, lack of leadership, lack of funds for education lack of access to uh, pr uh, protective services in terms of uh, sexual 
uh, condoms and things of that nature. It's, I'm like, are you serious? In this day and age of the World Wide Web, the Internet, we are in the information age where everywhere you turn, you are being informed and bombarded with information that you're trying to tell me that kids and the majority of the, the homosexual men in, that, in the black gay homosexual community do not know about HIV and so the HIV rates are skyrocketing and it's become some even quoting it as uh, uh, just as bad as a third world country and I, 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 I mean, I'm like wow and some of these oh my goodness these educated people are talking the stupidest stuff the fact of the matter is it's not going to change because it is a lifestyle of sin and it brings about death, be it physical or spiritual. It brings about death. And until you change a man's heart about his behaviors, nothing is going to change with regards to HIV race. Y'all have been talking about it, spending millions of dollars trying to educate people on HIV and ain't nothing changed. These kids out here, they doing having sex without condoms now, and it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. And 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 and, and you just yep 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 yep, and ain't nothing and nothing is changing. You know why? Because it's prevalent. It is a is a it's, sex in the gay community is so prevalent in, with regards to anonymous sex and not caring who you have sex with, but just wanting to get it and get off. And that's and and that is core to the homosexual to the homosexual lifestyle. Been there and done that, so they so people cannot say that that is not true. Uh, and and uh, the, the, those out there who who are in relationships, absolutely, uh, but they are far and few in between. So when you think about the HIV race in Atlanta and how concentrated it is among black and brown, I am not surprised because the fact of the matter is, when you look at the states that are. Uh, that have high cases of HIV and they love saying the MS you know I hate that thing that new term they gave it MSM men who sleep with men no it's homosexuality it's homosexuality whether you call you you're bisexual you sleeping around you got a wife or whatever it's homosexuality the highest rates are amongst homosexual men it syphilis gonorrhea look it all up the highest rates are among homosexual men Oh my gosh, and, and we keep going round and round and round in circles talking about foolishness when the only way this is all going to stop and change is that a man's heart change towards righteousness, towards God's word. But anyway, this is James from Non Free Project. I'm pulling up into my driveway. You know, God bless you all, and I pray that that something has been said that will touch the heart of a man and that they recognize that Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. He is the way, the truth, and the light, and no man comes to the Father except by him so we can pass laws we can do all of this but when you when you bypass jesus you create a quick way to hell and there is no other way out of that way other than by the blood and receiving what he did on the cross for you all right this is james from the Free project peace out jesus christ is lord